All right. Hey, 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 everyone. So, hope you guys are ready for this super cool example of Neil Young's really righteous swamp shit chart that he has. So, uh, this is probably a little bit more of an advanced class for those who have studied the Jaimini techniques of Ernst Wilhelm. Or uh, if you're studying astrology, just do your best to follow along, but I'm not going to stop and explain why I say every little thing because that would just take all day. Um, so to begin with, uh, I want to talk about my point here is to show his him being a, a badass person and a badass human, um, humanitarian, a very righteous person, and him being a musician. Um, so this Neil Young, if, if you don't know him, he, he's a rock and roll musician from the 70s or even maybe late 60s or yeah, he's been around a long time. He was born in 1945, as it's shown here. And he's just a really righteous person. He's always really just uh, made, I've always just been so happy with how righteous he is. He knows right from wrong so badly. He's so passionate and so vocal um, about things that are, you know, about injustices and things. Like when the Iraq war started, he was incredibly vocal about that. And he made an album about how wrong the war was and how corrupt it was and about how we needed to impeach the president um, within like a month of the president or even going to war and stuff. And this guy was super old, you know, I mean, he was really, really old and didn't need to go and make a new album, you know, and it was actually a pretty decent album for a musician who's over the hill or, you know what I mean? Like most musicians after their peak, they don't make the best albums after that time. Um, you know, just tons of things about Neil Young have really uh, made me admire him. Uh, he is like, a, he's always been an avid car collector, but then he got, he gets all of his cars to run on electricity if they're actually going to be driven by him. So I actually met someone one time who was working in at the, like a Ford dealership. Um, and they had Neil Young's, they had this old Neil Young Lincoln, car from the 50s a lincoln from the 50s it was all white and i don't know my cars but it's like i i could imagine this was a really gorgeous car and he was getting it entirely this person worked on it and told me that he was he was getting this car entirely rebuilt to run on just electricity and just to play his pogo music system which he invented or got designed so he makes cars run on electricity he does all these cool bat cool really really cool things um the Pogo music system, he created uh, basically an iPod that actually vibrates and actually emanates the actual music and isn't just digitally repli replicating the sounds of the instruments. So a lot of people don't know that, but when we listen to music on, a, uh, you know, on YouTube or on, over a computer, we're not hearing those actual vibrations the way they were meant. We're hearing electronic representations of them. Um, so it's a very Rahu thing. And, you know, when you listen to a record on a record player, that is actually, you're actually just magnifying the natural vibrations and grooves that are set into that record. So that's really a beautiful, a beautiful way to listen to music. And that's how all humans should be listening to music in a modern age uh, when we can have whatever we want and have luxuries. But normal people don't think that much and just like to go with the trends and be sheep. Um, Neil Young is not a sheep and you can see that in his chart so he with his resources he went I don't want to listen to music the way these people do I care about music I want to feel the music so when you listen to this pogo player that's like a little iPod you can put it in your pocket and feel the vibrations of the music you know you can feel the beat in your pocket vibrating um, which is just really really cool so it's like a little mini record player um, now, of course, the music industry just bashed this entirely. Um, and, it, you know, he, this is a major threat to huge, you know, industries like, like Apple and people who, you know, have huge pull influence over the, over the uh, you know, people who write reviews and all these things. So it got bashed, but don't take their word for it. Let's look at why that would be bashed. Well, the public has to do with the seventh house, seventh Lord Taurus, uh, seventh Lord Venus ruling Taurus is starved by the sun. The sun, or sorry, thirsted because it's in a water sign. 
wait, no, no, this is a, this is up to debate, uh, but we'll actually count it as starved. Whenever it's with the cruel planet, it's starved. Um, at least that's how I count it. So this Venus is starved uh, by the sun. So the public is starved by his sun, his innate soul nature, his ambitions, his his him just clearing out his path and what he's got to do with his life and the kingdom he wants to create on planet Earth. So the public doesn't like to embrace him because he rocks the boat a little too much. Um, the sun is the 10th Lord. So he's a real mover and a shaker. He wants to change things and make the world better. Uh, the sun's in good dignity here. Um, so that's one, that's one way you can see right off the bat that uh, the public is not going to immediately embrace him. He doesn't have that fortune in his karma, but that doesn't stop him from doing what he wants to do. Also notice that Saturn, his Atmakaraka, is starved by the moon, um, which also deals with the public. But that has good things to it as well. I guess I should start talking about that now. Um, if you notice this chart, it's not the strongest chart. It's not the chart of someone you would expect to be a musician um, or a really famous person at first glance. But, you know, you can see that the Ascendant Lord is going to the 10th. So he's a powerful person. He's going to do a lot in the world. That's one of the best places to have your ruling planet if you want to do a lot in the world and be a capable person. This, the Lord of that is a son that's in the first. So he happened to, happens to have a very, very lucky first and 10th house interchange. Um, there is a whole course you can take on inter, on the mutual exchanges that Ernst has taught. And I've always been really big into this. And I was really getting into dispositorships right before he taught that course. So I was really happy when he taught that course. I really liked it. Um, this is a good example that really uh, reaffirms what he was talking about and what I was finding on my own too and what certainly many, many astrologers have found. I know Western astrologers are big on this too, but basically just using dispositorships and uh, the mutual exchange. And especially if it's got first, fifth or ninth house stuff going on, it's a really powerful interchange. And those are called like Maha Yoga or uh, so I forget the, what it's called right now, but it's like a one, something with a Maha in it, which means great or a big interchange of energy. Uh, in plain English, that means like it's a part of your your nature to do this thing that it's interchanging with so you'll be inspired to do it no matter what and we really see that in his life because he's had obstacles he's had setbacks he's you know he's been criticized he's been um not always embraced he's had issues with his bandmates with his team members he had a bandmate who died of a drug overdose but that didn't stop him he made an amazing song about it that was one of the most well-known rock songs of all time you know so that's that's also the nature of Scorpio to take difficulties and transform them into something greater um, and to overcome the vulnerabilities of life and when life makes you vulnerable to overcome that um, but also note that he has one of these he has not just a first and tenth house interchange which makes him a very powerful person in the world um, a very productive person, but he also has a fourth and a ninth house interchange. Fourth house has a lot to do with music, and it's also holding the planet of music, the moon. Moon is the planet of musicians. Saturn is in Cancer in the ninth, so they are interchanging. The fourth and the ninth lords are interchanging. So, fourth house things, emotions, feelings, expressing those. Uh, land, happiness. He bought a farm at one point a um, long time ago from a man who didn't like him and thought he was a punk rocker or, a, you know, didn't identify with him. And he wrote an amazing, one of the most well-known songs of all time, Old Man, about the old man that he bought the farm from. Again, he just takes everything people throw at him, negative, he just takes it and turns it around into something artistic or beautiful. Um, moon. Yeah, so moon having to do with that in Aquarius in the fourth, interchanging with the um, Saturn, who's over there in the ninth, shows that it's a big part of his path in life and his dharma, the ninth house things, um, to be a musician. And, 
you know, Aquarius is humanitarian. Aquarius is the sign of being a humanitarian and being an activist and being vocal about um, things that you want to be vocal about and being an individual. So that's so big in his chart. So this moon and Saturn interchange uh, shows that he'll be a musician and he'll be vocal and he'll interchange them and he'll use his music to be a humanitarian and to bear water symbolically or to make life more bearable for other people through this art and this uh, is being a muse in many ways. So yeah, I think it's really the interchanges that make his chart so strong. Otherwise, it's not the strongest Rashi chart. And you gotta have, you have to have a Rashi chart that's got some strength to become as big and well-known as him. Um, otherwise, and you know, now I'm gonna look at his Swampsha, but otherwise, that Swampsha being really good, if there was nothing in the Rashi chart, he still wouldn't become a rock star. He would just have not a great life, but then still find a lot of meaning and depth and happiness from it. Um, so when you look at the Swamsha, you look at the Atmakaraka in the Navamsha, that's the Swamsha. So that would be, uh, Aquarius for him. So bam, again, more Aquarius things, more humanitarian qualities. The Aquarius Swamsha is one of the main factors, um, on a, as a baseline foundation for him wanting to be a humanitarian, wanting to improve life do some sort of social work maybe last night i was work i did a chart for someone who had an aquarius swamp shit and they were a social worker for a lot of their life so that's another thing that can happen um saturn saturn is there too so it's proud it's in mula tracona in the first 19 degrees of aquarius wow that's just beautiful um saturn in the swamp shit means you'll accomplish deeds um, oh, someone's knocking on my door right now. Um, one second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I'm in my, you know, I'm still learning how to, how to do YouTube videos and um, still make a living with doing astrology. This is hard. I don't have time to edit stuff. You're going to have to just deal with me walking out of the room. <laughs> All right. So, um, so now the Swampsha, Aquarius, Swampsha. Um, yeah. So Saturn, more of the accomplished deeds, more of the hardworking qualities as the Amakarka. It being an Aquarius means there's some really good merit, some really good karma connected to him. And then the moon makes one a musician. So the moon is the planet of him being a musician. Uh, you have to learn the Jamini courses to really know what all and why that is, but he's got that. So he's got the classic perfect musician placement from the Jamini techniques. Um, that's really more important um, <clears throat> as on a foundational level than the Rashi chart stuff for making him a musician. But then there are even more things going on. So if you look at the Pada, his, yeah, you can look at this thing right here and it shows the Pada. So the Lagna Pada, the Scorpio Pada is in Aquarius. So again, more Aquarius things going on. This stuff really starts to stack up. Um, Moon there makes him a Sri Manta or a person who becomes wealthy and glorious and established in their field. Then, if we look, we also want to look at the Upapada. The Upapada is Scorpio. And again, it holds Venus, which again makes them the Sri Manta. <clears throat> and what's cool is at first, you know, the Pada is usually more what you come to. And then the Upapada is what you might come to even after that. And so at first, he made, made his, established himself as an influential musician with this moon Aquarius. And then as time went on, <clears throat> At this point now where he's at, he's not really a musician anymore, but he's just 
he's Venus, Sun, and Scorpio, Srimanta. He's just a beloved figure. He's a charming entertainer. He's a Venus person. He's just someone that we that the public, uh, not everyone, you know, like I said, the public hasn't entirely embraced him, but he's adored by Scorpio people or by a lot of people, um, which is because of that Venus thing. And he's also a leader. He's a real leader in uh, in the world. You know, he has a, he has a lot of influence and uh, that he has gotten more influence over time. So we can see that with the Upapada having Venus and the sun in it. So all of these uh, Aquarius and Scorpio things going on over and over are definitely really seen in his chart. Um, Mars and Scorpio is really about uh, being a very righteous person. Um, and Mars is about knowing right from wrong and saying with the sun. And you see how strong those are with his chart. Um, and then the Saturn stuff is about, you know, having, improving the suffering of life. Um, and he's done a ton of humanitarian things aside from just being a musician. And uh, he's done all these benefit concerts and charities. He's done a lot with his resources and energy. And so it's cool. This is a good example. If you studied with Ernst and his Jamie stuff, you, you know how important it is when the uh, Padas, and the Swamsha and the Upadas keep overlapping with the Lagna. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? You keep seeing them over and over. Like you see that in the chart of like Paul Newman and a lot of people um, like J.K. Rowling and stuff like this too. Um, and then also just notice how powerful the Swamsha is overall. Saturn proud, Jupiter in its own sign in the second house certainly has to do with him wanting the best quality sound for music, like the Pogo device, the music I was saying. Mars in the third, making him really courageous, having a lot of valor, I believe Jaimini says of that placement. Um, and then K2 in the 12th uh, actually is a placement for enlightenment and stuff. And I'm sure he's had an enlightening life. Cool. So I hope this is a good example. And I hope you guys learn a lot from this. Neil Young is a very righteous person. And you can see that in his chart. Thanks, y'all. Um,